Welcome to Tapworth Memories Part 2. This time we're looking at Perry Street and Chard Junction, that kind of area. Halfway down Dyke Hill now. On my right, over the hedge, used to be an orchard. Over the wall to my left used to be a children's playground. They put garages there after a while. Notice it was put there in the reign of Queen Victoria. We are Perry Street House. And Miss Small used to live there. And uh, she was very generous. She gave each child at the school, at Tubber School, a shilling. That was quite a bit of money in those days, worth having. Factory Lane. And the thing about this road, there is a chain at either end, put across the road to stop traffic, either end on Christmas day because it was a private road and they wanted to keep it a private road so they had to block it off one day a year. Uh, back in the time when the postman and the milkman used to deliver on Christmas day, then they had to make this walk out through here to factory cottages. There are quite a few cottages here, about seven or eight, and the house you can see ahead. And so, yeah, they had to uh, make this trip. But my granddad lived here, and so I was used to seeing the chain across the road on Christmas Day. Also, Rave used to come in along this lane. That's the field I pointed out earlier, which used to be an orchard. here it would have been in the spring but there were loads of toads splattered all in the road because there was quite a fair bit of traffic going to the lace factory ahead and so the toads used to come back every year to spawn in the ponds where they actually started their lives you can just see on through the trees. Factory Lane. Up there goes to the top of Dyke Hill. Back out to Perry Street, past the Lace Factory, and down there to Char Junction. out there to, I can't remember the name. <laughs> Chilson Common. Uh, a bit muddy out through there. Anyway, that, they used to call it Iron Style. Not sure why. I remember my granddad calling it that. So you kind of got West Ford right over there. Back up the road to Tatworth Memorial Hall. I can remember when the hall opened in 1953, there was a children's party and Bob Pallister ran a game session. Chestnut tree at Chestnuts. I remember when this bridge was built. I'll tell you why. Because uh, me and two mates, we were here on the day they finished it. There was a pile of bricks over here. We decided to chuck them into the water down there and making a lovely great splash. It's chucked in two or three each. The farmer was stood behind us and gave us the right telling off. And uh, so we quickly went. And then 
We may have lived over there at Mount Pleasant, but when we finished playing, we had to go up through the road here, past that farmhouse, and up to home. Well, we were walking up through here about an hour later. We saw the farmer, his wife, and his brother, and a couple of others there, and we thought, hmm. We dreaded that we were going to get towed off again. We got up there, Boxer Best was there with them. He gave us the biggest telling off we'd ever had. The farmer's wife had a bit of a smile on her face, so we thought, yeah, it's not that serious that they're going to do anything about it. <laughs> they walked on up over Dyke Hill and went indoors, probably still shaking. They didn't tell her mums or dads anything. Uh, so <laughs> That's why I remember this bridge. This is Chestnuts and Mount Pleasant in the background and the stream runs down to the lace factory and the little stream up there would have been the, uh, the stream would have been the means of working the mill. The road up to Common Arch as we used to call it the railway bridge was up there and Cherub Common beyond that where the sports were held. This is the Foss Way, famous Roman road. This is Bridge Villas. And over to the right, just off the road, is the former Baptist Chapel. There was a sweet shop here, Miss Board, and the butcher shop, Miss Messrs Board and Son. The Golden Fleece pub just up there. This is the field where they held Charcoal and Sports. They used to put a big marquee in there for the teas and, and then they'd have small fairground rides and a skittle alley actually. And uh, quite a bit, big village thing, I, I think held in Ju June or July. And there were, the main thing was the sports, the races. Yeah, quite a lot of events, cash prizes, they didn't get that in the Olympics even. And yeah, wonderful tea. Main item that everybody looked for at the tea, cream buns. Just imagine a cream bun like this. A nice dollop of cream and a dollop of jam. Look at that. Then it became a contest for the boys to see who could put away the most. Look at E. Eve had eight cream buns. Yeah, yeah, Vanner. Former pub there, the Char Road Hotel. Hard to recognize it as a pub now, would you? But, uh, yeah. Char Junction on the Waterloo Exeter line. We have the old platforms down here of the former station that closed in 1966. I remember being here in September 1962, the 10th of September. We had been down early in the morning and cabbed one of the engines that's asked the driver if we could go on it and we went for a ride around the sidings where they shunted and then came back into the branch line platform and stepped down from the train and really pleased that on the last day of service we were 
uh, managing to get onto the engine that was pulling one of the trains. Later in the day, playing football at the other end of the village at Crossways, we thought about wouldn't it be nice to catch the last train at 9 p.m. to Taunton? Well, no way we could do that. Taunton is a long way away, uh, no public transport. And then one of the lads said to his brother, go home and ask dad if he'd pick us up. And so he went home and the answer came back, yes, he would. So we quickly went home and got some money, changed, came down, bought our ticket, and off we went to Taunton amid lots of cheers and firecrackers and lots of singing. The last train to San Fernando was sung quite a few times, a well-known song then. Anyway, we enjoyed the trip to Taunton. I was really pleased to be on it and always remembered it and really grateful for my mate's dad for picking us up. By the way, we were picked up in the Holy Chariot. It was the station master's house. The footpath that runs along here up towards the lace factory. What we when we remember that. And, uh, if you came from the village down the footpath here, you came along here to get to the station. Strangely, after that, I came to work here. I work for Bradford's just across here. I'll show you somewhere back there. Bradford's where I worked. And uh, also, this was a coal yard, so I came across here quite a lot of times since then. Trains were still going, running up the main line, but uh, the branch line was closed. And so I spent quite a lot of time for a year or so before I went into Chard did the same thing and we had to go over to the station every day uh, checking in and out all the coal wagons that had come in and been unloaded by the staff there. Along the same lane is this field which was the Perry Street football field for many years and at the top where the trees are, that was the cricket pitch. There's a pavilion there painted white and down the bottom here for football there's just a tin shed where you could put your boots on and um, and at half time get a cup of tea or oxo or something like that. Uh, so you walk further along the same lane. This is where the railway line to Chard ran. The line ran up through there. About three miles, I think, to Chard. Remains of one of the old gates that went across here to stop you kind of running onto the track. You could just open the gate though and walk through and uh, there would be another one over there. In this field there was a bomb crater, about six foot wide, probably a bit wider than that, but it's gradually it filled in over the years. Uh, the butter factory, the milk factory was up over there and so the bombs were aimed at that but went a bit astray. Apparently everybody was told to stay inside the factory, but uh, one chap ran for it and he was the only one to get killed. Well, that's the end of part two. Hope you enjoyed it.
Maybe it's jogged some of your memories. Part three will follow soon. Bye for now.